This e-learning video covers hand tools. It is part of the G4 or MS4 unit for your motor vehicles course. Please ensure that you take the most relevant notes and pause the video if needed. There's also a quiz at the end of the video. The lesson objectives for this section is that after studying the section and completing the assignments, the student will be able to answer the question on hand tools and safe use and general advice and instructions for using tools. General advice and instructions for the use of hand tools. This information has been provided by Snap-on. Only use a tool for its intended purpose. Always use the correct size tool for the job you are doing. Pull a spanner or wrench rather than pushing wherever possible. Do not use a file or similar without a handle. Keep all tools clean and replace them in a suitable box or cabinet. Do not use a screwdriver as a pry bar. Look after your tools and they will look after you. The table on the next four pictures in this video show the most common tools which you come across in the workshop. It has got the name of the tool and the example of and uses of each tool. Please ensure that you take note of the name of each tool and what they are used for. Don't forget you can also pause the video to take notes directly from it. Hose removal tools. A number of tools have been developed to aid the removal of hoses. These cranked and blunt bladed probes can be used to ease the end of the hose to break the seal against the connector pipe. Do not use anything sharp as you will easily put a hole in the hoses. Another method you can use is a sharp knife to cut the hose back, but this method can only be used when the hose is going to be discarded afterwards. Strap wrenches. These are used for removing and replacing fuel and oil canister type filters. Tools used for exhaust removal. Some useful tools for exhaust system removal are chain wrenches for twisting seized pipes and oxycetylene welding equipment for freeing up rusted joints. An air chisel or cutter may be necessary for cutting off components that will not be reused. Torque wrenches. Torque wrenches are used in a vehicle workshop on a daily basis. They are essential for correct tightening of fixings. The wrench can be set in most cases to click when the required torque has been reached. They can be used from checking wheel torque settings to cylinder head bolt settings. An important point to remember is that, as with any measuring tool, regular calibration is essential to ensure it remains accurate. Bearing puller. Removing some bearings is difficult without the proper puller. For internal bearings, the tool has small legs and feet that hook underneath the bearing. A threaded section is tightened to pull out the bearing. External pullers hook over the outside of the bearing and a screw thread is tightened against the shaft. Soft hammers, commonly known as lever and hide hammer. These tools allow a hard blow without causing damage. They are ideal for working on drive shafts, gearboxes and final drive components. Some types are made of special hard plastics whereas some are described as copper hide mallets. Image one on the right shows a copper insert on one side and hide or leather insert on the other. It is still possible to cause damage however, so you must take care. Brake adjusting tools. On many earlier braking systems, the adjustment, the adjustment which is the gap between the shoe and the drum, had to be adjusted manually during a service. This had to happen because over time the friction material on the brake shoes wore thinner. Most modern systems do this automatically, however many early systems are still in use so tools such as these which are suitable are used to rotate the gear inside the drum which will be very useful. Some are made to suit particular manufacturer systems so ensure you use the correct tool. Test lamp. A test lamp is often an underrated piece of test equipment, however it must be used with care. 
The advantage of a simple test lamp is that it draws some current through the circuit under test. This allows high resistant faults to be located easily. However, there is also a disadvantage because drawing current through electronic circuits can cause damage. Using a test lamp for checking supplies to electrical items such as lights and motors is fine. For all other tests, you must use a multimeter. If in doubt, consult the manufacturer's data. Jumper wire. A jumper wire is useful for bypassing components such as switches. For example, a brake light switch. If your brake light switch is broken, you can use a jumper wire to test if it is definitely the brake light switch which has gone. However, do not short supplies to earth by using this method. As a safety feature, it is recommended that a jumper wire is fitted with a fuse. A value of five to 10 amps is probably ideal. Crocodile clips or spade terminal ends can be very useful for testing purposes. Terminal kits. There are many kits that are available. They usually consist of a selection of terminals and special pliers to crimp the terminals onto the wire. These are often used when you are repairing wires in the vehicle or making up your own wiring loom. Wire strippers. With practice, you will be able to strip wire using side cutters. But just in case, there are special tools that are available to make the job easier. There are a number of different types shown in this picture. Soldering irons. Most soldering irons are electrically heated. However, there are some very good gas power type ones available now. The secret with a soldering iron is to use the right size for a specific job. One suitable for more delicate ICs and circuit boards will not work on large alternator diodes. More damaging would be to use a large iron on a smaller circuit board. You can use soldering iron and solder to also repair wires in a wiring loom. This is the end of the e-learning video for hand tools. Um, I hope you've managed to take the most relevant notes possible. Don't forget you can always pause and rewind to go back to where you might not have got all the notes. Also the PowerPoint which accompanies the video is available as a link. Once you've got all your notes in order, please ensure that you attempt the quiz underneath the video in the Google Doc.